At this point, we've finished the first part of the continuous integration series, and if you just landed in the middle here, you can find a link to the playlist in the description. So by now, you should be pretty comfortable with what the basics of continuous integration are and things like setting up GitHub actions with some task runners such as NPM scripts. Everything we've covered thus far is sort of the core foundation of a continuous integration workflow, things like linting and testing and a build step. And that's all extremely valuable, and in my experience, what you'll find in probably the majority of CI workflows. But now we're going to get into some exciting stuff, and we're going to start with continuous deployment. Continuous deployment builds on top of continuous integration by automating your deployments. What that typically looks like is an auto deployment when you merge into your main branch, because at that point, you've either run it at the push step or the pull request step, and all of the rest of your CI suite has run, so you're saying that you're confident that you can push this change up to production, most likely. So in this video, we're gonna start with Vercel, which is a hosting platform that's really friendly for the continuous deployment workflow. I had to pick between Vercel and Netlify as they're both kind of my top two favorites right now. And it was sort of a toss up, but I ended up going with Vercel. So in order to get to that point where we're deploying to Vercel, we need to actually make our code right now into a sort of website or app, because right now it just runs a node. So that's gonna be the first part of this video. And if you're not interested in seeing that or following along, I'll have a timestamp, which will be named for cell, which you can jump right to for when we very first start setting up that process. But for the first part of this video, we're gonna be just adding an HTML file, setting up a couple of inputs and hooking up our JavaScript, a little attack function to that. So now that you know what we're gonna be going over in this video, let's start coding. <laughs> First thing we're going to want to do is let's add a new file here and I'm going to name it index.html. So that's going to be the source directory and that's important. So normally you would put this in the disk directory if you wanted to see it in the output because that's like our public facing folder when we host it on a website or a web server. That's what's going to look up that index.html and show that. But I'm going to put it in source here because I'm going to want to auto generate it out and you'll see that in just a moment. So let's name this CI slash CD demo. I'm going to make an H1 just so that we know the page is loading. Just have some visuals for it. And I'm going to add some more stuff here in just a minute. But for now, let's save that. And in order to turn this into a template that gets put in our dist and is hooked up to the main JS, I'm going to add a quick Webpack plugin. So I'll pop over to my terminal here. And I'm going to do npm i d. It's going to be HTML Webpack plugin. This is a really common plugin if you're just trying to like, you know, process HTML in the whole Webpack way. I do show this in my Webpack series. If you uh, haven't seen that, it's in the full Webpack project. So then let's set up the config for it real quick. So it's pretty simple. We just go into our Webpack config. Um, we're going to do import it first. Const HTML Webpack plugin equals oops, require. Let that autocomplete for us. And we have to use the require syntax here, comma JS, because our Webpack is processing all our other ESM stuff, import, export syntax, but it's not processing the config file. So, so then I'm going to add a plugins property here at the same level as module. And you're just going to instantiate a new and then that HTML Webpack plugin. Now this alone will set up a file, but we want to use our template. So it's just gonna use a, a default HTML and hook it up to whatever your output main JS is. But we want to do a template option. So you pass in an object and then you just give it a path. So in this case, I'm gonna go into source and I'm gonna say, go grab that index HTML and use that. So it's that simple, let's make sure it works. So we'll do npm run build. And what we should see is in this dist folder, we now have an index HTML, okay? And if we format this, we can see that it has automatically hooked up this script for us. That's the main thing that it's done and output it to our, our public directory. And the reason that we wanna do this is because we are actually ignoring, we don't wanna push up like all of our production code. We basically want it in a state where it can just be built at any point in time from our source code. We don't really want this output stuff hosted in the repo. That makes sense. So we're ignoring that, but our server is going to generate that. So it will run this build command. So what's next? Well, we just want to do some basic hookups here. So we can come in here and say, let's add um, a label real quick. And that label is going to be for, this one's going to be creature. And I'll just put, you know, creature here or creature name. 
And then I'll make an input of a type text. I'll make the ID the same. Creature. And then I'm going to make a copy of that real quick. And this one's going to be for damage. I'm going to purposely leave this um, for demo purposes, just so you can see a bug fix. So ignore that for now. And then I'm going to put a button here. And the button's going to have an ID of result button. And I'll say attack. Oops. Okay. I want to make sure that we're doing this in the source directory. Remember, we don't ever really want to touch anything in the dist directory. Dist for distribution. So now all we need to do is go into our index.js and make some real quick modifications here. So I'm going to get rid of this log. And we're just going to go ahead and grab some of those elements. So I'll write the first one out, and then I'll just kind of breeze through the rest so it'll save you some time. So here we're going to say, um, I'm going to want that result tag. And I'm going to just do a document.query selector. Result tag, I believe I named it. And then we're gonna need a few of these. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that result button. We're gonna add an event listener to it of a type click. We're gonna write this function on the fly here. And we're not gonna need anything from that actually. We're gonna store the result just cause I like to be a little declarative there. We're going to run the attack command, and we're just going to simply take the creature.value, so go get that element input and put its value in the first argument, and then damage.value, the second one. This is really crude, but it's for, you know, simplistic demo purposes. Really, the goal here is to kind of make this a sort of working website, you know, as minimal as we can, but at least something that we can show kind of deploying and working so that you've, you know, you've got the model, you can see it in action. So then we're going to take that result tag enter HTML. We're going to set that to the value of the result. And that'll be that. So let's build this and make sure it works. So after we've built successfully, um, I'm just going to open this in my Explorer. You can get to that file however you want. It's just the HTML file. I'm going to open it in Chrome here. And there we go. So you can see we have creature name, creature name. That's the little bug I talked about. And I'll put like orc here. And then I'll just put like 99 damage and I click attack. Didn't work. Did something wrong. Oh, I didn't even add the result tag, dummy Jimmy. So I, what I want is like somewhere to put this. So I'm just going to put this ID here and call it result tag. It's like, what? Rebuild that again. That actually would have been a better bug to show. Load this up again. Orc, 99. Click. Beautiful, right? Some of the finest coding you've ever seen. So, you know, this isn't going to do any validation or anything. They could put whatever they want. They could put 99 here. We don't really care about that, you know. We're here for the, the CI stuff. All right, so we've got, you know, a website or app. Now let's get to deploying this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is commit this up, right? So let's do that. And we'll say add HTML website functionality. My terminal, git push origin main. Okay, now that should be up and being built over here. Yep, you can see it's running that task, perfect. Now it's time for Vercel. So you can go to vercel.com, Google it or however you like to get there. And I've wiped one of my accounts before so that I could show you this on the first time setup. So let's see what happens here, I'm not sure. So you could just do, go to start deploying from here and then it's going to ask you to hook up to a repository. So this is the easiest way to do this. You can pick whatever you're hosting it on. So I'll do GitHub. And this is just logging in first. So we're just, it's just basic auth. So now I click this drop down and you can do add GitHub org account. And it's going to give you this pop up here to authenticate it. So you will have to give it read access to things. That's up to you if you want to or not. A lot of people use this service. So do with that information what you will. What I like to do though, is I like to only select certain repositories that they have access to. So I can click this, I can pick this one repository that I want and I can edit that later in my GitHub account. And then I'll just say install. So once that's done, you have a thing that you can import. So we're gonna do that. You get to pick your team or just your personal account. So I'll just do that. 
So the teams are just kind of like if you want to share a set of websites amongst the team or something like that. This part was a little bit confusing for me. What they, they say, please select the directory with Git repository that contains your project's source code. Well, what they actually mean is, you know, if you, let's say you have a website and you're hosting it, but on your repo, it's not in the root of the folder. It's like, you know, you've got a back end and a front end folder or something like that. So they want you to point to that. So in, in many situations, it's going to be the root. So we're just going to go with that. So then here, uh, they want you to pick a framework preset, preset if they can't detect it. Um, in this case, we're not using a framework. We're going pretty lean. And so I'll drop down this build and output settings, and they want to know the build command, which we have, right? So we will say npm run build. That's our command. And then the output directory. Public is a common one, but ours is dist because that's the Webpack default. And then we can just simply click deploy. And it's spinning up for us our website. And I get confetti. Congratulations. Thank you. So you can go and you can visit your website, which is really cool. Let me bump this up. And this is a, a real URL that's hosted that you could give to other people. Let's see if it actually works. I do org, 22, click attack. Nice. Okay. You can also go back here and uh, you can click open dashboard and you can see this dashboard that kind of shows all of your deployments. And we're about to show preview deployments because while it is really awesome, don't get me wrong, that we could just deploy to Vercel like that, just that simply. That's fantastic, but what I'm interested in here showing is the continuous deployment process. So you'll notice that on our live site, we have this creature name bug that I had put in there, all right? So let's fix that. So I'm gonna come in here and this creature name, all I'm gonna do is just change this label and I'll change this to damage. So it's a very simple change, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change branches real quick. So I'll click this one. I'll do it this way. Let's name it like the fix pattern. So we'll say it's a fix and it is damage label text. So we'll create this new branch and then we'll commit up that simple change. Fix damage label text error. I should said typo. Then I could push that up through VS Code, but I have different SSH set up, so I have to do it here. Uh, actually, we shouldn't be on this branch anymore, right? Yeah. Okay, so we fired that off, and then let's go to our GitHub account. Now, we should still see another action run. Yes, you can see this fix damage label text error, and I believe we're going to get a pipeline error as well, so we'll get to see that. But if we go to pull requests, you'll see that they give us this option to start a new one as usual. We'll create that pull request. And what's really neat about this is you see this, this branch is pending to be deployed. And look at this, preview in progress, boom. So Vercel has added to our pull request pipeline this little comment. And what's really interesting about it is this preview right here. So this is a, a pretty long URL and you'll see it's actually named after, it might be a little small for you, but it's named after the branch with a little hash here. So if I click that, whoa, let me bump that up a tiny bit. It is a URL with our fix. So I can actually share this with other people before it goes live on our site, which is super cool. So Netlify does this as well. And it's a really fantastic new paradigm that just makes life so easy. So if my designers or my project manager or other coworkers or whatever want to see your code for your individual pull request as, as it was going to be on the live site there, here you go. You just send them that link and then they can critique it and you can fix it in the PR and then merge it in. It's hard to uh, overstate how awesome that is. Just getting that right out of the box. So we'll come back here and, oh, it looks like all of our stuff did pass. Cool. I thought I was going to have a linting issue, but I guess not. So this is what's pretty cool about that. If we go back over to our dashboard, you, we can see all of our preview deployments and they're actually like atomic. So we can go back a few and like see, you know, an, an old one if we just keep doing PRs and stuff like that. I'm not going to take the time to show that because it would lengthen the video, but just know that that's a pretty sweet feature. So it has not gone to production yet. Notice that we haven't had any deploys to production. And if we go to our real site still, which is this one, oops, this one, still has the bug, creature name. So all we need to do 
is click the merge pull request. So if it passes all of our tests, which is very important, our continuous integration process that we set up before, it will be able to be merged and it starts building automatically. I didn't have to do anything, I just merged it. So you determine what the main branch is, they just you know figure that out automatically. So this takes a little bit to build and then boom, if the build is successful, which is cool, if it fails, it won't swap your live site with a broken one. Uh, but as long as the build is successful, you know, can't guarantee that all your code works, but no errors at least, then this will be swapped. So then if we go over to our URL again and I refresh, the bug's been fixed on the live server. Pretty amazing. So it's pretty cool to kind of see that um, you, this is where some of the previous continuous integration setup that we did before really starts to shine even more because we still have this pipeline that we can make block our pull requests so we can still see, you know, the temporary server that Vercel has been kind enough to set up for us, but we can't merge it in until we pass all these things. So if we were to fail a test, if we have a really good test suite, we can be pretty confident that, you know, maybe the build succeeds, but there's some functionality in the website that's broken. Well, the test could catch that first. So you have these kind of layers of checks that build confidence in your process. And you've started to automate it to where because you have that confidence and because you ship often and you fail early on purpose, you now know really early in whatever steps you're coding, just continuously, that your code is passing or failing. And so with confidence, you can merge it in and have it automatically deploying. So this is where this automation process starts to kick in and really starts to go full steam. It's an amazing time to be a developer. Honestly, it's just so cool. Like they've taken so much of the grind out of your every day of manually going to your site and deploying things or triggering things and whatnot. It just gets better and better and better. Honestly, there's so much more cool stuff that Vercel does for you that I'd have to have a whole video and maybe even a series to show some of that stuff and Netlify. It's just, there's so many good choices right now. But for the purposes of this series, I think that this shows off the benefits of the continuous deployment parts of Vercel. So I hope you're as hype as I am about this whole paradigm and we have even more cool stuff to add to the pipeline. So I will see you over in the next videos.